Okay, well, I guess I'll start. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. Um, my name is Grace Alster, and I'm the junior analyst with the European team at Ember. Um, and today I'm just going to introduce you to our new web page on the site, which is sort of our central hub now for European data and analysis. Uh, so obviously from an environmental perspective, there are many problems with society, but we focus just on the power sector and electricity generation. Um, so the burning of coal and gas obviously produces a lot of CO2 and other problematic emissions. Um, out into the atmosphere. Um, and we believe that an important way to make change in this area is for the information about the power sector to be accessible and transparent and open for everyone to use. Um, and a large part of information being accessible is not just that it exists somewhere on the internet, but that it's sort of easy and you don't have to necessarily have a, um, a degree or a big background in maths to be able to use it and for it to mean something to you. Um, so previously we would just upload an Excel file onto our website quietly, uh, sort of hope no one noticed, um, and a few people do use it and download it, but we noticed that when we put a graph onto Twitter um, it got a lot more engagement. People needed that little title to explain to them what was going on, they needed a bit of background information, and once it had already been put into a visualization for them then it was just a lot easier for everyone to use. Um, so we decided to put a page on our website where we would make these graphs every month so that people can take a look and hopefully find it much more useful than just an Excel file full of numbers. So we have data on this page. Um, we've got the generation every month by every sort of possible power source um, in Europe. Uh, we update it on the second Monday of every month. It covers EU 27 countries, as well as Serbia, Montenegro, the UK, and Turkey. And it goes all the way back to January 2018. Um, and I will put a link for it in the chat um, if you want to have a look. Um, and I'm hoping it will be useful for journalists, for campaigners, or anyone who just needs to fact check some information that they've got on the power sector or, oh crap, I'm sorry, or who wants to um, maybe find a new story for themselves or just get some guidance on how to talk about this issue. Um, so let me share my screen. Uh, so this is it. It's called the European Electricity Generation page. Um, and up here, you can either skip straight to the data download on this button here, or, um, or you can read through all of our analysis down here. And I'll, I'll update this little bit here every time I update it so that you know how fresh the information is. Um, so we start off with just a few graphs about the sort of history of electricity generation in Europe. Um, as you can see, renewables have been overtaking fossil fuels, um, and all of these graphs on the page are interactive. Um, so you can click on these legend bits here and sort of customize the view that you want to see, or if you want to share it online, then you can fiddle with these before taking a screenshot. Um, so obviously the main focus is on coal. Uh, it's a the biggest problem that we have in the power sector at the moment um, and we're tracking month by month how much generation is coming through it across all EU 27 countries. Um, we're also giving an overview of the share of generation from each source for all the European countries here. Um, we go for the last 13 months so that you compare you can compare the last month with the same month in the year before um, and you can also customize to see um, nuclear generation as well if you want or hydro here. Um, and if you want a more detailed view of the numbers for a particular country, you can go into zoom in and take a look at the figures that go all the way back to the beginning of our data here. Um, we've also taken some standard emission multipliers so that you can see the total amounts of emissions coming from power generation from each of these fossil sources. Um, other fossil includes oil, peat, um, stuff like that. 
and there's also the amount of generation that comes from these sources as well so you can compare and see that the the largest countries like germany turkey and italy are also obviously the largest emitters uh, finally we've got this little metric where you can sort of compare the progress of countries irrespective of whether it's just because they're doing a lot of good generation because they're just a large country so it's the change in market share so the percentage of production from all 12 months of 2018 to the most recent last 12 months so you might be surprised to see estonia is doing really well at the top um wind and solar have increased by 12 percentage points while fossil fuels have fallen by 21. obviously they're a very small country in the grand scheme of europe but it's good to see that this is a sort of slightly more size independent metric for their progress um, Greece, Ireland and Spain are also doing really well here. Um, and then this part here, every month I'm just going to do a little write-up of the main points of what, what's happened in the previous month in electricity generation. Like consumption as a whole has been lower than it was previously. Uh, wind and solar are both up five terawatt hours compared to the same month in previous years. Um, that means fossil generation is being pushed out, gas and coal each producing about 7.5 terawatt hours less. Uh, nuclear outages in France are also continuing. It's just a little bit of sort of background and a sort of continuation of stories that maybe have been going on for a while. And then each month we're picking out a graph that we think is fun, exciting, a bit interesting um, and encapsulates a story that we want to tell. So this time there's actually been six new wind and record wind and solar records in Europe. Um, the Netherlands, France, Spain, Italy, Hungary, and Bosnia have all produced more of their like electricity mix from wind and solar than they ever have before, uh, which is fun. And in this part as well, you can scroll through, you can see the records that we're going to put out every month, regardless of how many there are. You can also see if there's been a minimum coal record. So say Serbia has produced less electricity from coal this month than they have um, in any previous month in our data, and so has Italy, um, which could be a nice sort of country level story if you're campaigning in that area. We're also showing who has the highest electricity prices, um, which at the moment is Ireland at 97 euros, uh, and this is a wholesale price, not at the customer level. And we're also showing carbon intensity, um, which Poland wins every month, but um, Estonia, Cyprus, Bosnia, it sort of changes month by month, depending on the weather and the time of year, um, how well everyone's doing. Um, and finally, we're showing the percentage of production met by wind and solar. This, this sort of dark blue dot here is for 2018. The green one is the last 12 months, but you can, if you want to check against older data, you can change that to see 2019 instead or compared to 2020 um, as well. And then finally at the end, we've got a little sort of more traditional dashboard style part where you can see for every country, for every type of generation, nuclear, hydro, whatever, um, you can pick your country that you're interested in and see on a month by month basis um, how the generation has evolved over time. Um, to make some quick comparisons, hopefully it'll be useful. And finally, at the end, if you're after prices, we're just pushing them all on here. This also includes Norway. Um, and if you want, we've got some default selected ones at the top, but you can add your own. I don't know who you'd be interested in, maybe in Hungary. You can add them on there. Um, and compare. And we've also got the maximum and minimum, um, so you can tell who's at the top and who's at the bottom. Um, and yeah, if you just want the numbers for themselves, then you can download using this button here. Um, it's still in Excel format, but the data sheet is uh, in tidy format, so it's very easy for uh, data manipulation afterwards. And this part also is more detailed information about all the sources we use um, down here and where the data comes from, what each sheet contains. And um, in the interest of transparency, we've started putting in a data flag for um, figures that we have to estimate or adjust or 
maybe we're just saying if we're uncertain, we think maybe this is wrong, but we haven't got a better source yet. Um, and that is pretty much everything.